Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, located in Oshawa, Canada. Our mandate is to spread the good news and to influence our surrounding communities. We hope your time in this place of worship, love, communion, service, and community will be a glorious and life-transforming experience. This is a place for your entire family, a place for you and me. We are a community church that deeply cares about you. All ministries were created to meet individuals' needs. In Bethel Assembly, we are a Bible-believing church charged with spreading the Word of God throughout the region of Doab. We are interested in your God-given potentials and wanted to help you to be able to fulfill your God-given destiny. We, we care about, about you. Welcome to your battle experience. Brethren, I want to welcome every one of us to the month of March. It is your month of divine acceleration. I said you are moving forward. Amen. You are moving further. Amen. You are moving further. Amen. You are moving higher. Amen. In the name of Jesus. For as many who are joining us online, welcome to Better Experience. For as many who are here in person, welcome into the presence of the Lord. And I want to say this, beloved. I don't want to be moved by what you see or what you hear, or what you feel. Because our God is still the Prince of Peace. I said he's still the Prince of Peace. He said, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world. Now we may never be able to understand certain things in life, but the sovereignty of God abides the same. It cannot be questioned. And so tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. let your mind be at rest. Let it be at peace, because God is still in control, in the name of Jesus. Genesis chapter 26, let's read from verse 1 to verse 6, divine acceleration. Genesis chapter 26, we'll read from verse 1 to verse 6, and then verse 12 to 14. Let's read uh, NIV. There was famine in the land, beside the famine that was in the days of Abraham. Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gera. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, and I want you to say after me, church, do not go down to Egypt. Do go down to Egypt. Live, in the land live in the land where I tell you to live. Amen. Amen. That's the word of the Lord for someone. Don't go down to Egypt. We'll come back to it later. He says, stay in the land for a while, and I will be with you. I will bless you. For to you and to your descendants, I will give all these lands. I will confirm the oath I swore to your father, Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and will give them all these lands. And through your offsprings, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commandment, my decrees, and my instructions. So, Isaac stayed in Gerah. Someone repeat after me. So, Isaac stayed in Gerah. Let's go down to verse 12 now, 12 to 14. From verse 12. And Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reap an hundredfold, because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. Verse 14. Verse 14. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Divine acceleration. Now, beloved, 
One of the things the Lord told us this year is that this year is the year of the divine. Amen. Amen. And the word divine means what? Supernatural. Something godly. Something that you cannot explain. Something that is not natural. Something that is what? Supernatural. Praise God. And talking about the divine. When the divine intervened in the affairs of the natural, what will follow will be something that cannot be explained, will be something that human mind and human understanding will not be able to comprehend. Amen. And so this year, I want to encourage someone that you want to focus on the God who is the divine. Because he's the one that will divinely take you to your palace of throne. It will divinely take you to that palace of greatness. It will divinely take you to that throne of glory that he has ordained for you. In the name of Jesus. Now, in this story, talking about Isaac. At the beginning of this year, we've been talking about the promises of God for us. The same promise that God gave unto Abraham. God repeated the same promises to Isaac, his son. That I am going to bless you. I am going to make you great. I am going to increase you. I am going to enlarge you. I am going to expand your borders. Enlarge your coasts. And so, when God has given his word, I don't want you to be moved by what you see. Because if you go back to the beginning uh, verse, from verse 1, the Bible talks about in that land something happened where God asked Isaac to stay. There was famine in the land. And famine could mean various things. In the journey of life for a believer, it could be a time of serious challenge. Financially, health-wise, or in career. Or otherwise. It could be a time of famine in the land. It could be a time of difficulty in the land. And I'm sure in the last two years, some of us knows what the land has gone through. But the Lord was very specific to Isaac. Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerah. And God knew his mind. God knew what this man was planning to do. And God told him, I want you to do something. I want you to stay in the land. God wants each and every one of us to understand that there is a particular assignment for you. And that assignment can be carried out in a particular location. Amen. Amen. And so I don't want you to leave your duty post. I don't want you to be moved by what you see. I don't want you to be moved by what you hear. This is the reigning career and you are rushing there. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I will give us some principles. Talking about divine acceleration. God is a God of principles. And when you follow the principles of God, God will always show up. I said, it will always what? It will always show up. Now, talking about divine acceleration, we understood what the word divine means. Now, talking about acceleration, what does it mean to accelerate? What does it mean to accelerate? Someone who has been what? Moving before. Will do what? Will pick up speed, Right? will pick up speed. I pray for someone. Whether you have not even been making any progress before, this month, heaven will visit you. Amen. You will not only make progress, Amen. but God will fast track your progress. Amen. You will begin to accelerate. Amen. You will begin to accelerate. Amen. If you have been crawling before, you will begin to walk. Amen. If you have been walking before, you will begin to run. Amen. If you have been running before, you will begin to fly. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Acceleration. God is the one that will cause you to outrun your peers. 
outrun everyone that you assume they've gone ahead of you. Divinely. Praise God. God called Isaac and told him, I have a covenant with your father, Abraham, uh, in Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. Isaac was a child of covenant. And that's the first principle. Talking about divine acceleration. What exactly do I need to do? What principle do I need to follow? Is that principle of covenant. We've talked about it earlier this year. That when you are a covenant child, God said, but, yeah, talking to Abraham now, but your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son. And you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with who? With him. God is saying, I will establish my covenant with you, period. He has said it. Don't be moved by what you see. If you go down to verse 21. God said, I'm not going to establish my covenant with you alone, Abraham, but with your son, Isaac. And God emphasized again, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac. And at this time, Isaac was not even yet born. Amen. Amen. God is a God of covenant. Psalm 50, verse 5. Say, gather together, my beloved, my saints to me, those who have made the covenant with me by sacrifice. It is the year of the divine. I want you to understand that without covenant, you will not be able to accelerate. You see, when you are in partnership with someone, praise God, when you are in partnership with someone, it does not matter whether you are the one that is uh, carrying out the task, or it doesn't matter your role. The moment you are in partnership with someone, everyone that knows that this is this organization and you are affiliated with it, they will know that whatever is going on becomes what? You are part of it. Amen. And so when you are in partnership with God, why would you not care, car, care, you know, let him carry all your cares and burdens? Praise God. Amen. And so, if you are not in partnership with God today, let me beseech you by the mercies of God, become one. A covenant partner. God is still looking, he's still searching for people that will partner with him. Psalm 24, verse 6. He said, this is the generation of them that seek my face. God is looking for people that will seek to know his will, to partner with him. Amen. In the same Genesis, chapter 25, verse 21. When you are in partnership with God, what God is saying is this. Everything that you ask, I will do for my name's sake. Look at what happened here. Isaac received the covenant. He was a child of covenant. And he followed the covenant. God visited his father, Abraham. He came into the world. But when he got married, amen, he had to call on the same covenant partner. He said, God, my wife cannot remain barren. Isaac prayed to the Lord on whose behalf? On behalf of his wife because she was childless. And the Lord answered his prayer. God will visit someone Amen. with answered prayer. Amen. Principles of divine acceleration. The first principle is the principle of covenant. When you are in covenant with God, every of your prayer will be answered. I said, every of your prayer will be answered. Amen. 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 If you now go back to our text, Genesis 26. Look at 25, the A part of it. 
you and I, 26, 25, you and I have a role to play. We have a part to play. In knowing that God is depending on us, especially in this generation. We see a lot of things out there. But God wants you to be unique, to be distinct. And in the case of Isaac, he built an altar unto the Lord and he called the name, he called on the name of the Lord. When you are a covenant partner, you will always build an altar for the Lord. Altar represents what? A meeting point. Hello? Altar represents a meeting point. We had the naming ceremony yesterday, and I remember saying something. That most of us, when we were being christened by our parents, there were certain items that they would bring together. I'm sure some of us will remember. What are those items? Sugar. Water. Honey. Oil. Now, what does all those items signify? Amen. What do they signify? An offering to who? To a God. To a deity. You see, we have been given a name that is greater and higher than any other name. And so, a lot of all those items, even though... They were being done in ignorance. What most of our parents did not know is that they were covenanting us to different gods. Hello? When you set up an altar and you bring an offering, you are bringing an offering to a deity, to a god. You are saying, this child, we are naming you, and this is cola, and this is, you know, whatever items. Principles of covenant. Please, beloved, from today, let God and only God be your covenant partner. Amen. Let him be the covenant partner of your children. You want to erect and set up an altar, let it be only to the almighty God. You want to make progress. You want to move forward. And God is going to bear you on eagle's wing. He's the one who bore the Israelite on eagle's wing to the land of promise. He will bear you on eagle's wing. But you must be his partner. And so, you must be his covenant partner. Divine acceleration. The life of Isaac is the life that I want every one of us to go back and study. Because there are certain things that this man did. Number two. is what I will call the principle of obedience. When God told him. Don't go down to Egypt. Stay in this land. And I will do what? I will bless you. I will be with you. But what was happening in the land at that time? There was famine. Everybody was complaining. There was famine. Isaac obeyed the word of the Lord. He stayed back. In verse 2 of that uh, Genesis 26. The Lord appeared to him and said, don't go down to Egypt. The Lord is saying to someone, don't go down to Egypt. I don't know what decisions you want to make. Egypt does not represent the promised land. Don't go down to Egypt. Stay in the land where I tell you to live. The principle of obedience. There are still some of us that need to break away from the traditions of men. Things that we are used to. This is how my parents used to do it. What is God asking you to do? Please obey. Praise God. Praise God. Because obedience is important. Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. If you obey 
and serve me. You will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Isaac obeyed while everyone was leaving. No wonder God blessed him. The principle of obedience. This book of the Lord must not depart from your mouth. You must obey it. Every instruction of the Lord, it does not matter how stupid or how silly they may appear. I mean, there was famine and everyone was checking out. God says, you stay. You want divine acceleration. You need to obey the one who knows the end from the very beginning. Number three. Number one, I said it's the principle of covenant. Don't depart from God who is your covenant partner. Number two, you must live in obedience. Jesus' mother told them at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, whatsoever he asks you to do, just do it. I mean, someone is asking you, fill a jar with water and go and serve it. And you know that this is a wedding. And you know what it means to go and serve a guest, something that you know is not the real thing. Tell your neighbor again, please obey. Because obedience will cause you to move forward in life. Obedience will accelerate your progress. Number three is what I will call the principle of sowing. And this is the curious thing here. Isaac obeyed to stay in the land, but he did not stay idle. And that's where the challenge is with most of us as Christians. God has given me a promise of blessing. And so what are you doing with it? Isaac obeyed and he began to sow. He began to plant, uh, go back to verse 12. He began to plant crops, NIV. So when we're talking about planting, some of us who did a Greek on paper, right? It's different from someone who is a real farmer. When you see a real farmer, you don't need to ask them because you can see their hand and you will know, yeah, yes, this is a real farmer. When you start to plant crops, especially when there is farming, what happens to the land? It's already what? It's not soft, it's hard. And so you need to dig, you need to till. Isaac sowed in the land. What are you sowing? You want to make progress, you need to sow. You need to plant. But it's not just in the planting. Bible says in the same year, he reap an hundred fold. Why? Because God bless his planting. The Lord will bless the work of your hand. Amen. What do you have? You want God to move you forward. What do you have in your hand? Amen. What do you have to provoke heaven to bless you, to lift you up? What do you have in your hand as a seed? In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6, talking about Solomon, when he ascended the throne of Israel. The Bible says Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. He gave unto the Lord. But what I want to point out here is this. For those of us who are Bible students, when you're talking of a thousand burnt offerings, now, in those days, those burnt offerings, he, he, he's not just going to command all his servants to bring the burnt, because he's the one that is offering it to the Lord. What did he have to do? He has to be personally what? Dear. Amen. So, he will not just give the commandments. What I'm talking about is hard work. You're talking of sowing. Solomon will literally have to show up. And make sure that what they are giving unto the Lord is what befits the Lord. 
And so he will inspect them one by one by one by one and say, yes, this is good for my Lord. You want to move forward? Be prepared to work hard. Be prepared to plant, to labor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the Lord blessed him with crops. He had bountiful harvests, flocks, hearts, and servants. God is taking someone higher. But it says, I should tell you, don't despise the day of your little beginning. What do you have in your hand? If you don't have a seed, you cannot have an harvest. Divine acceleration. Let's go back to verse 13 of that Genesis 26. Isaac sowed in the land, and in the same year he reaped an hundredfold. And the man became rich. His wealth continued to do what? To grow until he became very wealthy. But did we see how he started? Isaac was not lazy. Yes, I know you have received the promise of God this year. It's the promise of open heaven. It's the promise of overflow. What are you doing with the promise? We're asking you, brother, sister, you need to improve yourself. I'm too old to study. I cannot do this and I cannot do that. Let me tell you this. Brethren, there are opportunities in this land. Just like in the days of Isaac. Now, when there was famine, the tendency is that most people will have abandoned their farmland. Correct? And Isaac took advantage of that. He called all his servants. And they began to plant. Add labor. No wonder God blessed him. The Bible said the man became rich. His wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. Look at verse 14. He was wealthy with flocks. Now, do you have to plant flocks? No. How come during farming, God blessed him with so much flocks and herds and servants? Up to the point that the Philistines envied him. Divine acceleration. Because when you put an effort, heaven will bless the work of your hand. As much as I want us to know that the heaven is open, I'm here to let you know that the heaven is open, but God wants you to tap into it by putting in your efforts. Praise God. The fourth person, uh, the principle, and then we'll pray. It's what I would call the principle of perseverance. And that's the one I love most. The principle of covenant, obedience, sowing, and what? Perseverance. Now, when you look at that verse 12 again, as I've explained, Isaac sowed in the land. What we may not see is that the, the time of sowing is not immediately the time of harvest, right? There will be what? A process of time. You need to persevere. Some of us want to sow, and we want God to double it immediately. There is need for perseverance in the presence of the Lord. Now, is planting his crops, we know there is famine. The curious thing is this, how did this man enjoy bumper harvest? And yes, God blessed the work of his hand. Paul may plant, Apollo may water, but who gives the increase? The man did not only plant. The man did everything in his power to make sure that even though there was famine, I'm going to water these crops. And so, when the Bible says, in the same year he reaped an hundredfold, he did something. Praise God. If you go down to verse 18, from verse 18 to verse 19. 
after he had planted, he will call all his servants. The Bible says, Isaac reopened the well that had been dug in the days of his father, which the Philistine had stopped. Amen. He did what? He dug a well. When there is famine, you will need to dig down deeper to be able to get a well. Water. To water those crops. And so the man was not lazy. Praise God. Go down to verse 21 again. You see, every time one well will run out of water, it will dig another one. Then they dug another well. What happened there? Is that every time he dig a well, the people who are giving up, they will quarrel with him. You are on our land. This is our water now. So they quarrel with him. The water is ours. And he said, okay, take it. I'll leave it for you. He will go somewhere else again and do what? And dig another well. Praise God. Verse 25. Every time you encounter challenges in life, beloved, don't give up. Do you know why? Because the one with you is the one who has already promised you that I'm going to bless you. Amen. Isaac moved forward again after they strove with him with the previous well. Dear his servants, they dug another well. Now, you want to tell me that this man who has been digging wells and digging wells from uh, verse 18 downwards, is it not the same principle that he applied earlier? So when you see that the Lord blessed him, the man plant crops. Yes, but he was not just planting. He was doing something else. He was watering them. And God blessed the work of his hand with bumper harvest. Perseverance. You need to persevere in the place of the promise of God for your life. Don't give up. Amen. Don't do what? Don't give up. Let me say this, brethren. Isaac did not just prosper because he was a child of covenant. Yes, he prospered by relationship. He had a relationship with God. But Isaac prospered because he obeyed the voice of the Lord. He prospered because he obeyed the principles of God. He says, give. And it shall what? Be given unto you. There are certain blessings that will not come except you give. There is the place of prayer. And say, God, bless me. But there is also the place of sowing. And when you sow, there is the place of what? Of perseverance. Tell somebody beside you, you need to wait for your harvest. Because that harvest is coming. No wonder God told us this year. There will be what? Great harvest. Isaac sowed in the land. And in the same year, God blessed him. The man works great. Grew. He went forward until he became very great. Divine acceleration. Please rise up. And you are going to take a word of prayer. This year. From this month. You want to begin to make progress. You want to move forward. You want God to fast track your progress. Please follow the principles of God. Remain in covenant with him. Every of his instruction, make sure you obey it. And make sure you sow your seed. And after you have sowed your seed, you must persevere. Because after we have done the will of God, there is need for perseverance. We talked about the prince of Persia. We told him the answers to the prayer of Daniel. How many days? If he had given up, what would have happened? I don't want you to give up on God. Because he will never give up on you. And so I want you to pray and say, Father, Father. I can hear your voice. Father, Father. 
In the name of Jesus. As I obey your word. As I obey your commandment. And stay in covenant. And stay in covenant with you. Help me to sow. Help me to sow. And give me the grace to wait for my harvest. For me to enjoy divine acceleration in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Talk to the Lord. What do you and I have to do? You know it has been shown unto you, O son of man, what the Lord your God requires. I don't want you to talk of what God should have done, could have done, might have done. But I want you to testify of what God has done. Because your eyes will see it. And that's why I want you to pray. Help me. Wherever my progress has been impeded by sin. By disobedience. Move me forward. Move me forward. Move me further. Move me higher. Accelerate my progress. In career. In my family life. In my finances. Accelerate my progress. In my health. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to thank you today because you are the Almighty God. I want to thank you for the entrance of your word. Lord, we come before you this afternoon. Looking up to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And I commit every of your children into your hands. You have instructed us this afternoon. Lord, we have heard your word. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. For every one of us to be the doer of the word. In the name of Jesus. As we stay in covenant with you. Lord, you will move us forward. In our career, you will move us forward. In our businesses, you will move us forward. In our studies, you will move us forward. In our health, you will prosper us. In the name of Jesus. In our family life, you will move us forward. In the land of Canada, wherever the soul of our feet has stepped into your word, say we will possess. I pray that everyone, that their progress has been impeded, slow down. Oh Lord, you will bear them on Negro's wing. You will accelerate their progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. For those who don't even have any relationship with you, I'm asking, Lord, you will visit them today. And you will save their soul. You will bring them into the household of the beloved in the mighty name of Jesus. That none of us this month will miss our visitation of progress, of advancement. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Thank you for joining us today. We hope your Bethel experience was blessed. Join us next time here in the sanctuary. You can drive in, carpool, or reach out to our transportation team for assistance. Our services hold every Sunday at 10 a.m. Stay connected via our social media platforms and visit our website at www.rccgbethelassembly.org. See you next time.